So this is Senate Government Operations. It is Friday, April 30th. <clears throat> we are going to try to finish up the um, retirement bill. It is H449 <clears throat> and we need to get it out of here. So we have, we have a bill. So what I'm going to do is, um, and thank you all for joining us again. Um, and I did get a message from Chris Roop that said that he would be joining us but he has to be on appropriations and he'll join us as soon as he's free. So what I'm going to do is we have, Becky has given us um, its draft V number five. I, that, I was confused by that because I was looking for draft five point something, but it is, the, it is posted on our website and yeah. we all got it emailed to us in addition, I guess. So does everybody have the right one? Right. Version seven. What? Version seven, I believe. No, I think that version seven just has one change from version five. So I'm not printing it out again. So I see, I see under Becky Wasserman, I see uh, as passed by the house, I see DR 1.7. And then I see under Jeanette's name, version five on our website. Is there a new, is there an updated one? Take the latest one from Becky because I, I believe there's only one change from version five to version seven. Or just check your email, Allison. Um, Gail sent it out probably like an hour okay. ago. Well, I, I know she, I, she did. Okay. But I it was All right. Out. Let's. So the way we're going to do this committee is because we have very limited time. <clears throat> we're going to start going through it section by section. And we'll see if there's agreement on a section. If there's agreement on a section, we are done. We're moving on to the next one. If there isn't agreement on a session section, then we'll pass that one over and come back to it in, so that we'll make sure that we get all the ones that are agreed on done first and then um, move on to the others. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> My husband told me last night that I sounded like a tyrant and I apologize if I do, but so, okay. So section one is the definition section. And this has not changed for many days. And it is, um, are we agreeing, are we in agreement on the definition of independent? That's the change we made. And what we did is we took out the section that says that they can be considered independent if they simply sign um, a disclosure form. We took that out. So are we okay with this definition? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any comments from anybody in the, in the, I'm looking at the rest of you here that aren't, okay, great. Everybody's okay with that. Done. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to section, to the uh, 522, the VPIC committee, we have made no changes on the makeup of the VPIC committee. Are, is everybody okay with this the way it's written? <coughs> it has one by Visers, one by Visters, um, one by VMERS, uh, two by the governor, the treasurer, the um, uh, chair who's appointed by the other members and DFR or um, designee and VLCT and the school boards association. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Anthony, Keisha? I'm trying to, re I'm trying to, this hasn't changed in a, in a few iterations, but- It has but, not changed at all. Okay. We, we've made no changes to this. Did we, in a different draft, did we? Or, or no. is it the new, this, we're talking about the new board? No, we have never made change to the, we have never agreed on a change to the makeup of the VPIC board. So that's, it, as it was passed by the house. I need to look at my notes. <clears throat> I thought we made some 
suggested changes. Well, we made suggested changes, but we didn't agree on them. Okay. So are we in agreement with this or should I put a question mark beside this one? I would say question mark. Okay. All right. I need to sort of review it and sort of. Okay, so going on to the next change we made um, is that we um, under member terms, we um, said that members and alternates of the commission shall be eligible for reappointment and shall not serve more than three terms, provided, however, that a single term served as an alternate shall not be used to calculate a member's total term. Are we okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Yes. But, okay. We then have a big X. The chair shall not serve more than X years. Any comments there? Can we agree on something now or uh, not? I thought the, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I had thought Tom would be okay with 16 years, but well, I can't remember. We didn't make any changes. So I'm asking now if we have suggestions for changes that we can agree on. Senator Colomar. Thank you, Madam Chair. I believe that we also talked about no term limits. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and originally the house sent us 20 years, as I recall. Right, yeah. yes. So, so where are we with this? I was still most comfortable if we made it clear we care about this issue, but we're waiting for best practices to come back, recommendations on best practices and to decide next year. So just to take out the, the term limit for the chair period and let it come back. Because year. somewhere else we ensured that term limits was part of the study that's coming back or I don't know if right. we explicitly yes. said, okay. Yeah, then yeah. yes. Okay. It's Tom's, it's part of Tom's the VPIC study, right? <laughs> yeah, we were gonna um, add that back into the VPIC they study. Are, so can we take it. out the line, the chair shall not serve more than X years and just say if the chair is unable to perform his or her duty. The committee yes, shall elect an interim chair who shall be financial expert and independent. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I am a really reluctant yes on that. I, I, I'd rather leave it 20 years and not change it from the house and then reintroduce a new term than have unlimited terms for anybody ever. Well, I think, unfortunately, you are outvoted on that one. I know, I, I'm hearing you. I just want to voice my concern. My okay. father, I'm channeling my father. <laughs> and so the next change that we made is chair and vice chair. The chair of the Vermont Pension Investment Committee Commission shall have the financial investment leadership and governance expertise as required by policies adopted by the commission. The chair shall be a non-voting member except in the case of, of, of a tie vote. So do they not count in the 10? Is that what I'm recalling? No, they count in the 10. There are nine and then the, the chair makes the 10. Okay. Okay. I'm fine with this. Yep. Yes, I am too. Yes. Okay. Anybody else out there have any comments? Okay. Great. Okay. So well, I'm going through just the changes that we made because a lot of them we didn't have any issues with what the house had come up with to begin with. So, so I think the next change that we made On page was 13. Page, 13. page 13. Okay. I'm on a, I think I'm on a different version, but um, what is it? Senator Colomar. Yeah. It's at the top. It says uh, make recommendations of best practices and necessary actions to transfer the commission to an independent entity. Oh, right, instead of standalone. This is kind of weird, but I don't have page numbers on my thing. <laughs> and I have different page numbers, so, but it, it, it just- Is there a section? Yeah. Section if, three. Okay. 
Right at the end of it. Three little B. <clears throat> it was a, just a bugaboo of mine. It said standalone, and we'd always talked about independent before, and now we said standalone. So I just asked them to change it to independent to be consistent. And that's all. I, just so the page numbers are usually on the bottom right, but this one has them in the top center in case that helps anybody. They do exist. And, and Anthony, it would might help if you if you were on the website uh, under Jeanette, the V5 is seems to be what we are going on. Okay, I'm gonna go there. So I was working off of the email. I think we can also make it clear what section we're in. Sure. So, so sorry, there should be a new draft that was I had emailed out to to Gail that's not oh, version five. So. You did, Becky. You were there. And okay. I had printed out version five, and I just don't want to print out another full copy since there are so few changes. But also when, as Anthony just pointed out, when you're following along from an emailed copy, it, it's all one continuous document and it doesn't have pages. That's not true. It, oh, really? You have a different, because Anthony- <clears throat> let, Let's- Stay focused. Let's just stay focused here. I'm on the website now. If we, can, if we can identify sections where we are, instead of trying to figure out if we're all on the same, Place. So the I don't I don't think we had any other changes or recommendations around the VPIC at all. The next one I think is the task force section 10. Right. Um, there is I'm going to make a recommendation here on the task force membership and see what people think about it. We currently have one member of the House, one of the Senate, two appointed by the governor, the treasurer, two by NEA, two by VSEA, and one by VTA. <coughs> I'm going to make a suggestion here and see what you think about it. Two from the House, and the problem with only one from each body is that you can't get any um, political party representation at all. You, you really need to have two. So two from the House, two from the Senate, two by the governor, the treasurer, um, three by the NEA, two by the VSEA, and one by the VTA. And the reason that I said three, two, and one is because that means that there are three coming from each of the the VSTERS and VTERS, the teachers board um, system and the state system. So because VTA and VSEA, although they're separate bargaining units, are the same in the same system. So that that's my suggestion. Can can I just compare it to the initial one again the the initial one was two legislators um from the governor the initial one that we talked about or yes. the initial one in the house no the one the one we were comparing to that was the last thing we talked about that was 10 i think is that what's written in to here is the last one we talked about um <clears throat> i i, I can help on that if you want my okay i see it now two gov okay yeah go ahead brian that'd be great the last one we had was one from the House, one from the Senate, two from the governor, the treasurer, two NEA, two VSEA, and one trooper. That adds up to 10. Madam Chair's recommendation is we increase that. So it's two from the House, two from the Senate, two from the governor, the treasurer, three from the NEA, two from the VSEA, and one from the Troopers Association, which now adds up to 13. So I, I guess, I, so I think what I think we're doing anyway, what I'm doing is balancing, you know, the idea of increasing the number of people, which we heard just like may or may not add value to the overall conversation that kind of less is more with having more legislators, which I was really compelled, Madam Chair, when you said that you know, it was you and and Representative Terry McCaig a while back. I, you know, I think 
that feels sufficient to me. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that I think we need that many more legislators, especially since we're now doing a new oversight, joint oversight committee with legislators. This It feels like a lot of legislators, which- But remember, the, the task of this is very different than the joint, than oversight committee. The task of this one is to come up with a benefit plan that we can adopt that will um, be the benefit plan going, uh, or well, will be presented to the legislature and will be the benefit plan going forward. So I'm gonna put a red mark on this one that we'll come back to it. Okay. Okay. So then um, the next, change we made was um, around the designation of the um, uh, appointee by, and I think we can take that out, it's C, it's big C, little, it's two C, upon designation approval, any member appointed pursuant to one D, and that was the um, appointee of the, um, HR or DFR, and if we've taken them out, we don't need that. Agreed, Chief. Okay. <clears throat> and then here's where we have the, the potential change. And if you look at, there should be new language that is there right now, that is the, and everybody's only referring it to as, big A. Um, it's the, the goal, the fiscal goal. And if you see that new language, does everybody see that? Yep. Okay. So comments on that. That is simple. It's easy to understand. It talks <laughs> about um, looking at them with the current amortization schedule in mind and getting, um, coming up with um, options for getting to the, um, where we need to be. Anybody on the committee have questions about that? And if so, I'm gonna let Tom answer the questions. I'm fine with it. I, I am too, it's much simpler and, uh, and uh, I, I, I think it's great. Okay, the committee, okay, the Senator Rahm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it uh, I, I like the language about developing a range of strategies. I think they should understand the costs and benefits without being kind of backed into a corner. In it. So right. I think this is what the language does. Senator Polina. I agree. <clears throat> I think it's, it's certainly simple, uh -huh. it's, it's nice. And I feel like it gives them more options. I was afraid before that they're going to be wedged into trying to meet certain goals that were not necessarily the, the, the most important goals. Okay. Um, <clears throat> other member, other um, people with us. Uh, Tom, would you like to address this just to? Yeah, I'll just say, Madam Chair, um, we tried to accomplish, make it simple, uh, link it to the amortization schedule so it wouldn't be an easy out by just re-amortizing and also to create, give the uh, com, uh, com task force uh, flexibility in determining what they think is the best recommendations to make while also maintaining some goals in there for, for the treasurer. Um, you know, the big question was whether we leave the 25 and 100% in there or not. That was the only difference from our conversation yesterday. So I think we left it out originally and then we put it back in. So uh, I, I think it accomplishes those three um, goals. Um, uh, Treasurer? Yeah, I think that um, while we want to have different variations, it's almost impossible, for instance, if you said to lower the unfunded liability by 25%, um, and then you take a look and say, you know, uh, but you want to also lower the ADEC by 25%. Uh, the only way to do that would be to change the amortization schedule. When I'm looking at this just as a matrix, I'm seeing 16 different versions. Plus, if you wanted to have a no change, uh, you would add another four. You're up to um, 24 just standard variations of a theme to do all this. 
Um, and then you have the nuances of, each, of everything in between. And again, that's simple math. It's more complex than that. You're, you're going to have an incredible number of scenarios doing this. Um, and um, you can't do 25% of one and then 25% of the other uh, without changing the amortization schedule out to, you know, to, to an incredible period of time. Um, and, um, and then you have to do it for each. So if you said 25% UAAL, the unfunded liability, and then you needed to schedule the 25, the 50, the 75. No, no, you're looking at the wrong one, Beth. If you're looking at the one that says 25, 50, yeah. and 75. Oh, God. Okay, my apologies. Okay. Yeah. No, you need to be looking at the one on our website that is under Becky Wasserman that's draft there one. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. My apologies. We're, we're all a little confused. Yeah. I have one that was uh, set, uh, from um, um, in in the chat version. Is that the one I should be using? Yes, it is. Okay, so let me pull that one up. And again, if that gets to the point, uh, that that would be great. Uh, let me get down there. Uh, that's page. I had it. Nineteen. Nineteen. My apologies. I um, uh, I was uh, that was my comment a few days ago, and yep. thankfully, um, thankfully we're we're. It looks like we're past that. Um, th I'm good with this. Okay. Yeah, thank Enough you. Enough said. You're good with it. I am. Okay. <clears throat> Steve, Jeff, Mike. Well, wait a minute. I'm not good with it. Hold on. I'll wait for the treasurer. Okay. So even though you've taken it and made it more simple, um, if I'm reading this, let me do this again. Develop and make sure I'm reading the right one. I picked up what I think is in the chat. Uh, chat. Develop and evaluate a range of strategies to lower the actuarially determined employer contribution and unfunded accrued liability um, based on the actuarial vest and so on between 25 and 100% of the size of the increase from 2021. Okay. Um, am I reading? Okay. And um, uh, as reported, okay. So now you're only dealing with the UAAL here. Is that correct? The unfunded liability and not the employer. No, it, it says both. So the number of permutations that you're gonna have on this or combinations are gonna be extraordinarily large. Um, you know, if you, if you started with the UAL and said 25 to 100, then you can take a look at what you would need to do uh, with an amortization schedule, um, but if you if you combine these, it it simplifies the language, but it gets to the same point, which is that you're going to end up, if you have to do it against 25, 50, 75, and 100 on the U, on the unfunded liability, and then 25, um, 50, 75, and 100. No, it isn't 25, 50, and 75. It doesn't say mention that at all. There's no 50 or 75 in there. Okay, it says between 25 and 100%. Okay. Right. All right. Um, I guess it's going to be an incredible number. I'm, I'm, I'll be fine with it. I'll be fine with it. It's going to create a lot of different variations, but I'm fine with it. It might, or they might come magically come up with something. Yep. We'll be fine. Right. Okay. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff, Steve, Mike. Well, I like the language and maybe to, to respond to the treasurer's comment there, it does allow for some flexibility for the task force to actually look and see what works yep. or doesn't work. So it, it puts them in the one thing I, I, I don't necessarily like a lot is maintaining the 2038 amortization uh, schedule that was established in 2010. So that's an old schedule, if you will, and we're looking at everything. And I think that ought to be in the mix, frankly. But, but I think this does give the task force enough room in which to operate. You're right, there are infinite numbers of possibilities, yes. uh, Madam Treasurer, but yeah. it, it does allow for them to figure out how to do that as well as they can, given all the other things, factors that they're supposed to look at, they go on from there, B yeah. through J, I think it is. Yeah. So Jeff, if you look at D, however, it does um, give, you, give some flexibility there on the ability to maybe change the amortization schedule for a year or uh, and what what that would do but not to put it off to 2058 i mean right. there's yeah I, I, it does I, give I, some I, flexibility absolutely 
this works. Um, again, you're going to have a lot of okay. iterations, but you can yep. decide which ones you want to do. It's good. Yep. Um, Mike? Um, very simple. I agree with Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Steve? Uh, I'm not sure I'm looking at the right version of this, but I'm going to... V7. Go yeah, I don't, I, I'm having trouble finding that, but I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb and say I agree with Jeff. It's page 22. I think that's <laughs> very smart of you, Steve. <laughs> Take that for the rest of the way where everybody agree with me. I think we'll have a break. <laughs> I think you need to have that carved into something, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's a little bit like... Um, um, our lieutenant governor said the other day, and I think she's right, that we need to have all have T-shirts that say, Senator, could you please unmute yourself? <laughs> anyway, OK. Um, the next change that we had then was identifying potential options for limiting the growth in actuarial determined employer contributions to no more than inflation. Okay, assessing the impacts associated with any modifications to the current amortization schedule. So if we did change that, we, we would have to, or I mean we, if it was changed, it would have to um, uh, have any impact that would accrue. Yeah. Committee, committee, are you? I'm fine with it. Okay, okay. Anthony? Yes. Yes. Okay, the next schedule, uh, the next change said, um, proposed benefit structures with the objective of adequate benefits, including an evaluation of a risk shared risk model for employer and employee contributions, cost of living adjustments with a focus on reducing any future increases to the actuarial <laughs> determined employer contributions. I hate that word. Um, Which of those many words? actuarially. I think it's very hard to say. It is. It's Any comments there? Questions? Concerns? No. Good. Well, I mean, I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just sort of reading it in the context of later it asks, it, it calls for, you know, them to look at revenue and other ways of making mm -hmm. this a sustainable fund besides just changing the pay in amount right and it so it i guess i'm struggling too with the word object um objective of adequate benefits this section just feels a little bit kind of prescriptive to me as i read it now focus on reducing any future increases to the actuarially determined employer contributions what what exactly are we saying there Maybe Tom. <laughs> so, may I talk to this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, if you're talking, um, you know, benefit structures, and then what you're saying, a risk shared model that would impact employee contributions or cost of living adjustments. Uh, our thought was, um, uh, this is a little different than what I saw in the house, but our thought was that you would look out five, seven years or whatever, and if you see improvement, for instance, uh, that you would make an adjustment to employee contributions or cost of living adjustments or some other area. So the idea is that um, at, at our end uh, was that if you saw improvement, you should give um, the folks a break on, on some of the areas of pain. Um, I think that the way this is written now, it says that it goes both ways, that if there is a, um, uh, a, a shared risk model, that if, there, if you didn't su succeed, um, that, that, that you would look at these as well. Um, uh, it, is a, it is what's called a, um, you know, a, a risk sharing model, um, mm -hmm. and, and it's full both ways. Um, our recommendation was that, um, uh, to be very candid, that, um, that the employees have already um, done some painful hits and that we should only be looking at uh, um, what uh, um, what we could do to reduce those five or seven years out if in fact we um, uh, we saw improvement. I, I'm pretty sure that this would not um, that it would not fly through the Senate unless it was a shared risk model and there was some attention paid to that. 
Can you say more about that? Me? Well, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I, I mean, it, it is a, it is a shared risk. It isn't, um, it isn't just the employees or the employer who yeah. needs to take the, if there's a hit that needs to take the hit. It, it's shared risk. I, I believe yeah. that that's. So is I, anything changing about that? I mean, is there a reason we need to spell it out this way? Is, is it already shared risk or is that changing? Uh, Tom? I think this gets to the idea shared risk. There are some states that do add shared risk programs mm -hmm. into place if they don't meet certain um, investment rate of return assumptions. And it's sort of the, the overage or underage or whatever it is would be, um, I, I, if this language is very vague and it gives the committee the ability to look at some of those old, other structures that are around um, to maybe think of different options that would work here in Vermont. And it would be a way to share the risk between employees and employers in that situation. I don't, I think it's a little vague for, on, a, on purpose. So it gives them the flexibility to look at those states. You know, I would argue a different um, different perspective, but it can be dealt with in the committee. There is a mistake in this, which is that uh, if you're talking about employer contributions, um, employer contributions, that is the ADEC with a focus on reducing any future increases to the ADEC. So um, I think that what you really want to be saying there is um, uh, any increases to the unfunded liability. Um, right. Uh, yes. So, yeah, this is saying changing the increase in employer contribution, which feels like that doesn't make, that doesn't make Especially any sense. Especially since we, when you've got that up, you know, the employer and employee contributions, employer does mean the ADEC. Um, right. So it's a risk model for that and then impacting um, with, and then trying to reduce it when you might actually have to increase the employee and the employer together. So again, I think it, you, what you're looking at the measurement is if your unfunded liability continued to increase, then you would look at contributions and you would look at cost of living adjustments. So, and, you and, and I, okay. And I would add to that, that I think part of the issue with this um, subdivision is that it's a, a bunch of different edits being put in at different times. So yeah. when it came over from the house, it was just the employee contributions and cost of living adjustments um, as part of that shared risk model. I yeah. think at one point your committee discussed adding in the employer contributions to that and then uh, then another iteration was adding in the ADEC so um, I think that it it is a combination of a bunch of different suggested edits and and um, so what the treasurer just said um, I think is correct that if you're adding an employer to the uh, shared risk model then the ADEC sentence doesn't make as much sense Mm -hmm. So do the question is then do we just end it after cost of living adjustments period or do we put with a focus on reducing any future increasing increases to the unfunded liability. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, if you just leave it at cost of living adjustments, you don't have a benchmark of why why you're doing okay. it in a shared thing. So again, I would just change that future increases to the um, unfunded liability. Now, again, when I'm on okay. committee, I'm going to argue differently, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, I would I would further propose that instead of saying adequate benefits, we say competitive benefits. Competitive with who? Well, adequate for who, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I think either we that that word is really subjective as well. And I think we still need to be in the larger picture of this piece we're, we're trying to pay attention to. Are we still competitive in our region and being able to offer benefits to people? And, well, I think I actually I think that's addressed farther on when right, we talk but about saying adequate benefits, I think, is a is too subjective of a statement. OK, it is the task force that's going to determine whether they're adequate or not. Right. I mean, this is part of their job. Yeah. That's, their job but is adequate, to determine whether it's adequate. adequate is in the eye of the beholder. So it's sort of well, so it's competitive. So it's competitive. Right. Yeah. So it's competitive that I mean. I yeah, mean, but if, I, if, I, if somebody proposes 10 something, I know whether 10 something is adequate or not. It's a matter of opinion. But if somebody says 10 compared to 12, competitively, I know that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm at the lower end. Yeah, but 
Okay, well, I, I do, I think that um, was this we have to be really careful about thinking about how we're competitive with other other places and other states because they're very, very different. The benefits in Maine, for example, are very different because they're not a social security state. They get no social security, the teachers don't. So that's, we can't compare ourselves there. We can't, com we can't even compare the benefits for the troopers with the sheriffs. I mean, they're not, I, I, I think we need to stay with adequate here because, um, and, and my guess is that the, you have six people representing the unions here. And if they, are, if they come to a decision that whatever they come up with, what this task force comes up with is adequate, that's their, that's the decision they've made. I don't know. Uh, Becky, I think the way it's the way, Becky, the way. We... Wasn't this the original language from that came from the house? Yeah, it, uh. it was. And, and one suggestion is perhaps you can just take out with the objective of, mm -hmm. and without any descriptive words, because I think part of what this task force is doing is that yeah. it is looking at all these financial impacts and different benefit structures. And so to try to describe, give a descriptive term of a benefit structure before they do all this analysis, I think would be hard. It's a hard, um, it's a hard thing to describe before you have the information, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what would you, how would you rewrite that? Um, so one option could just say proposed benefit structures, comma, including an evaluation of a shared risk model, rather than try to describe what those benefit structures would be before you have that I information. See. Yep. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Before we move on, I just want to make clear, you said there's six labor people on the task force, which is true, but it looks like there's seven non-labor people on the task force. I... Actually, I um, am considering the treasurer. It is true. There's six labor people and seven non-labor. But I'm I I think that if we start trying to look at philosophical differences here, um, I'm considering the treasurer a neutral um, position. I don't. I know that nobody is actually neutral but I'm considering the treasure here a neutral position, but we're gonna go back to that. We're gonna go back to it. Yep, so this might be what we spend a long time on I have a feeling today. Okay, so Becky, we can change that to proposed benefit structures, including an evaluation of a shared risk model for employer and employee contributions, cost of living adjustments with a focus on reducing any future increases to the unfunded liability. Is that the way it would read? Yes, is it is it the correct term the unfunded actuarially accrued liability? Um, it's the UAAL, so the unfunded actuarially accrued liability. Okay. Nice, Becky. <laughs> we need to get that term actuarially there in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. If my grammar is off on actuarial and actuarially, we'll correct it. And welcome, Chris. I didn't see that you had joined us until this moment. So. Thank you. I apologize um, for being late. Okay. So I think the next change that we had made was how proposed benefit changes for new members may reduce the impact of future actuarial assumption losses. Madam Chair, yes. I know that I'm just speaking out of turn, but um, if you go to the one right under that, line 18, an estimate of the current, I know it's there and it hasn't been negotiated, but there is an issue with that. An estimate of the cost of current and any proposed benefit structures on budgetary pay-as-you-go and future accrual basis. Uh, if this is just pensions piece, uh, the pay-as-you-go should not be in there because the last thing we want to be suggesting is that we start doing uh, pensions on a pay-as-you-go basis yeah. and a funding basis. Okay. That's fine. This, this is the way it came over from the house. I don't think yeah. we even addressed that yeah. one, but so we'll cross off pay as you go. Yes, please. Everybody okay with that? Really good with that. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the one that I just read with the new members. Why? Um, 
I'll wait till you finish with your folks. Well, Good. I haven't heard anything from anybody. Okay. You're on H, right? And we just got rid of pay as you go. No, I'm not on H. I'm on little, I'm on Roman at four. Oh, you're on Roman at four. I thought that yeah. we were talking about pay as you go. Oh, it's up above. Okay, got it. In yeah. Roman at two. Got it. Yep. Okay. I don't hear any. Beth? Uh, it's complicated. It, I guess it can be done. You have to do something called an open enrollment. Um, it's expensive and it's inaccurate, but we can do, we'll figure something out. Never mind. No, we'll go I think on. it just gives them another option to yeah. work on. Sure. Yeah. Steve Howard, are you trying to talk? You are muted and I haven't heard anything you've said, but I see your mouth moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where you are. I've lost track of where you are. Okay, you're on, we're on the top of page 21. If you have one with page numbers. Okay, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, is there any other um, thing before we get to H? Nope. Is H do it? Yes. Yes. Uh, plan for pre-funding, identifying, um, including identifying long-term impact. Yes, yes. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that on the next one on I, we did add to both active and retired school employees to lower healthcare costs for employees, retiree school boards in the state. We added that language to the house. Madam Chair, if when your members finish, I do have a, a comment on that. Committee? I'm all set. Okay. Me too. Me too. Okay, Beth? So this is a really big scope. Um, number one, you're talking active and um, and and retired. Uh, you're talking about benefit design. Uh, it, um, uh, it when you went through the the the, the state actives in the study committee, you had um, uh, Jeff. I think that was a few years ago. Um, it it was a long effort. This is really a, a subject in and of itself. And uh, it really gets away from the, um, uh, the the focus. If you were to do this, it eats up all of the time, and it will eat up all the dollars as well. I think that this is something that um, uh, we're not we're not talking about how, when you're talking about health plan design. Um, and for all of these groups, it's 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 something that that's way beyond what I think um, uh, you're able to get done in this period of time. Uh, and I think it um, it diverts attention to, away from the, the main issues that we have. And I think it's something that, um, you know, ha, has another context, another other context. Um, committee and others. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, it, it's part of the benefits, isn't it? Isn't that what, what they're supposed to be looking at? Well, I think they're, it, what it's asking them is to look at completely new new ways of doing it. Like, um, should we, uh, I can't even think of innovative um, design, benefits designs, but um, we're, we're going to have a concierge, um, people are gonna pay a certain amount to a doctor for concierge, I think that's what it's called, um, healthcare or um, we're going to we're going to have our own. We're going to institute our own um, doctors in the state, and they're going to treat all our our state employees. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of innovative health de plan designs that. Well, it does. It, it is part of benefits, though. As Senator Collimore said, it's. Kind of, I think eventually it'll be hard to avoid talking about health benefits. If we're talking about retirees, right? And what it says there is, it says to, um, it says, a plan for re a plan to study health benefit design innovations. Oh, right, right. 
So it doesn't mean that, I don't think it means they got to get into great detail of all of all the options, but they have to give consideration to the options and then maybe come up with a way to follow through with some kind of planning process. Well, and a You're plan, right. a, a way so, to further study. They I might mean, say we we recommend that there be a a group that studies all these new innovations and I, yeah. okay okay Senator Rom. I, I always go back to the question of, are we setting this group up for success? Are we giving them the requisite, you know, time, money, and charge to actually accomplish this by October? This is getting really lengthy and kind of, I, I would side with the treasurer ju just in terms of, you know, this one more thing we're asking them to plan for a plan, you know, can the new oversight committee do that? Can they do something? Because this is too much to ask one group to do. That's a good point. I, I don't agree. I mean, this is a whole piece of the benefits. I mean, well, I, I agree that it's an important benefit, but. It could be its own study committee. I mean, this is a lot to ask them. Right. You just passed an amendment. You just passed an amendment to pay for the OPEB. The, yeah. uh, the health care piece I, in, in the budget. I, I think, I mean, it, it's all money and it all needs to be addressed. And I think. Then do we give them another six months to do their work? I mean, this is just a lot for basically four months. I think it's a great group of people and we'll see how far they get. And if they need more time, they'll ask for it. Maybe I mean, what I, we, maybe what we do in here is um, uh, just somehow make it that clear that they're not they're not going to necessarily be studying the innovations in health right. benefits, but that they're going to suggest um, a way to evaluate them. I'm not sure. I, I, um, I think that's my understanding is that what they'll put in place is a way to stay current with healthcare innovation innovation and and, and, and and that they may or may not want to be addressing in the future. I don't think it's to, to come up with the plan in those in the time frame we have, Keisha. I think it's to put in place a way to stay current with healthcare innovation or healthcare benefits. And who knows? Is, we, may, is, we may have changes at the federal level that would make a lot of this, you know. We may different. end up with a single payer system at some point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I, I, I think we're not if smart. They write, if they write that, that great. <laughs> so, so, Becky, is there a way of uh, wording that so that it's clear that they aren't coming up, they aren't going to be studying all of these, but are going to kind of say this is something that needs to be addressed as we go forward? I if, I, if I may, yes. uh, Madam Chair. Yes, please uh, do. <clears throat> um, this is about teachers and, and retired teachers. We, we operate a little bit differently than than the uh, state employees and the troopers. So that's why, you know, in some respects, it's there because we, we, we are different than they are. And that's to explore that. So I think um, the idea would be to um, have this task force uh, explore benefit design innovations. I mean, they, it, it's not... Um, we're not asking, I agree that we're the, the use of the word plan is a plan to study that. If that's not clear or does it, if that <clears throat> sends them in a too far deep into the weeds, that's not the intent. It's just sort of an observation that we, we operate differently than the state employees and the troopers and to acknowledge that the post employment benefits are healthcare and we should look at how we do that. Um, so that's what we we're trying to get at because it, because you're right, uh, uh, Senator Clarkson it was just a few minutes ago. You just put something into the budget. It's just part of the package. So, rather than a plan, would you want to say evaluating health benefit design innovation so that they're not coming up with? Uh, oh, we don't want them to. Yeah. Madam Chair, just, if I could speak to this again, please. Yes. So when you when you're looking at the charges and what was going on. Uh, uh, historically, there were two issues. One was the pension and the unfunded liability, the growth in the ADEC. And at that point, we were looking at whether you had structural changes and or revenue or a combination thereof. The issue with the teachers, I mean, with the OPEBs that we were addressing was the issue of pre-funding uh, and strategies to get there. And uh, 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 Senator, it, 
we might get part of the way there with what's in that um, uh, what's in the Senate bill, and I'm extraordinarily appreciative of um, of um, um, uh, the the Senate's uh, efforts there, and uh, and thank um, um, Senator Kitchell quite a bit on that. But right now, the teachers in the state, um, the teachers actives have very different plans than the uh, than the retirees. Extraordinarily different plans. If we if we start looking at this, we're walking away from the focus of how are we going to fund it to lower the costs. And I and again, I would agree with um, uh, Senator Rahm that this is going to get um, into a diversion. And even the way that Jeff just described it, I think we're getting into structures and understanding of what those structures are to develop a plan that divert us from the from the, from the main attempt, which is to lower the cost. And in the case of the teachers in the state, it's how do you get to a funding mechanism. Um, I do believe that you need to take a look at issues. Uh, several years ago, some folks discussed whether you pull the teachers and the um, and the um, and the state employees into one one health care. Yes. Case. That said, it's outside of the range of what we can do here. I would recommend a different study for that. Uh, this is going to to overwhelm the committee uh, once we get into this discussion. I've been trying to push that for years, Madam Treasurer. That. Everybody, everybody who's employed with any public dollar should mm -hmm. be in the same health care system. Any public dollar. Yeah. So I think that you, we might want to explore that with a, a different committee. I think that, again, this is going to bog us down in just defining what it is and what things we should study um, uh, and uh, what things we should not study. And uh, um, it gets us away from the, 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 the purpose. I have every interest in looking at health care. Uh, as do you, um, but I don't think it's, this is the committee to do that. Um, I would love to have conversations. We are gonna be submitting something that's gonna significantly lower the liabilities without changing benefits for the, uh, for the uh, teacher system um, uh, very shortly. Uh, that said, going through a process of trying to do it in this committee is, is uh, I just don't, I, I, it takes us away from the, 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 the most important goals of this committee, which is to lower the unfunded liability for both systems and to get to pre-funding for both the state and the teacher's system. Jeff, would you be, oh, Senator Colmore? Thank you, Madam Chair. So Beth, are you suggesting we don't make any reference to health plans at all in the uh, bill? No, or, I think, we, sure, we I'm just, sorry, sir. That's okay. Could we just sort of make it really generic and say that the task force could gain an overview of health, I don't know how to word it, but for both active and retired teachers and just leave it at that. So that they at least look at what is, what is in place now and what could be in place at some future date, but not get it deep into the weeds. But again, I think it's an important enough issue I would, I would hate to not at least say something about it. I, it just, I would, the could I care. raise the point? Oh, sorry. Yes, please, Becky. Um, so the task force ultimately is, is working on a report that's going to be recommending legislative action. Um, so with that in mind, if, if it's, I don't know how helpful it is for the task force to just be looking at an issue if they're not going to be ultimately um, recommending anything in association with it. So I'm just wondering if it's, um, you know, this could perhaps be something if you have an oversight committee that is, you know, one of the tasks of that oversight committee could be to, to recommend to the, the committees of jurisdiction that they could work on this issue or something something to that effect. But um, it's it does seem like for this, this task force with the ultimate goal of making a recommendation for legislation, that if they're not going to be coming up with some kind of recommendation, I don't know if that's the appropriate place for them to just be looking into it. Well, it is the only place I believe that we mention health benefits at all. I mean, we everything else is aimed at the pension. That's that's the whole uh, goal of the task force. So maybe they could be recommending to committees of jurisdiction. Um, I mean, I I'm I'm perfectly happy actually to just leave this out and say that this is something that has that 
has to be addressed, but not necessarily by this task force. But then who does? Because it, it, it is a huge piece of the cost of, of retirement for anybody. Is the uh, health but the health care benefits are different than the pension. Right. Sure. Right. That's they right. are, but they're they're necessarily tied together that they're paid for with dollars. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. they are tied together. We just saw it tied together yeah. in the budget. I mean, we just had a stark illustration of this. So, I mean, it's sort of awkward that they're separated, actually. I mean, I, I think that they should, they're all a piece of the benefit. I mean, they are benefits. Again, uh, may I comment again, I, if that's all right? Yeah. Okay, I, I like, I think what I heard from Becky was perhaps moving it to the oversight committee and saying the oversight committee would deal with pension and other uh, post-employment benefits, which is healthcare. Um, and uh, and take a look at that. Um, it, you know, right now, uh, the 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 change that we just made was about funding, um, uh, Senator. And uh, the changes that we need to make to 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 lower those liabilities by 1.6 billion dollars is how do we pre-fund? Uh, not necessarily the benefits. That said, the oversight committee could certainly hear um, uh, hear. Uh, Thoughts on that and, and, and make recommendations. And I think that would be a better place to, to put that. Uh, um, Senator Polina, you haven't said much. I'm in a quandary over it, to tell you the truth. I think it's really important, but I actually think it's really a big job. <laughs> I would lean towards leaving it out, I think, just because I don't think they could do a good job at it in the time they have, given all everything else they need to do. I say that with regrets, to be quite honest, because I think it needs to be looked at, but I think well, it's impractical to accept, expect them to be able to do it. Well, but it's asking them to put a plan, put a plan into place to address it. Right. I, I thought that's all this was doing. It, it needs to be addressed. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, so I agree. All, uh, uh, let's make it clear then that all they have to say is in their recommendation is we um, would ask the oversight committee to look at right. a plan to look at um, how to study healthcare benefit um, design innovations and with this in mind. We're going to tell that we're all we're going to do in this. This is going to take five minutes of the task force's time <laughs> to say we're going to tell the oversight committee to look at this. And they're going to say, why didn't government operations just tell them to make the oversight commission? Do yeah, this? Right. <laughs> exactly. All right. Where are we? I guess as long as somebody does it. Yeah. We're uh, on page. Uh, no, we know where we oh, are. I meant oh, okay. <laughs> where are we in making a decision? I said where I was. Yeah. I think I'll agree with Senator Polina. And, and remind us, Anthony, what are you recommending? With you? regrets, with regrets, I think we should not impose this 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 task on the task force. As much as as important as the health care issue is, we all know how important it is. I don't think they could do it justice while they're doing all this other stuff between now and like what is it, September, October? I mean, it's just it's really asking a lot. And many of the people who are, will be on the task force will um, know the kind of um, discussion that has been held here. And I'm sure that uh, the NEA will make sure that somehow there is a recommendation to the, to, that somebody look at this. Am I, I also think that it's pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty unlikely that this task force would meet and go through all this stuff and never consider health care. It's going to come up in their conversations, without a doubt. Right. So they That's may decide to do something about it, but we're just not telling them that they have to come up with something specific. Right. I can't imagine them going through this whole process and like at the end of it saying, oh, we forgot to talk about health care. And so Jeff can tell them, okay, you should make a recommendation that... It just, we, it, it, just it's, it, was, it came from us, and I'll just be honest right. with you and, and say that... I mean, it's it's because healthcare is such a big component of the puzzle, yes. and it, it, it sort of felt like we're we're ignoring that big piece, 
uh, particularly as it relates to the educators, because we, we operate differently. And and so it was just a thought if they're if they're looking at overall benefits, the pension, healthcare is part of it. Certainly, we will uh, advocate to the task force that they uh, they look at about creative and innovative ways to offer healthcare that uh, for actives and retirees. You know, it's been a big source of discussion in the state house for several years now. We all yeah. know. Um, so it was trying to put into play and have them look at it. Uh, but I understand. Uh, I understand numbers well enough to know. What if we just said, I don't want to backtrack, but what if we just said that we asked them to consider alternative health benefit plans? Wow. That's telling them to, con that's telling them to do it. I, I okay. honestly think I, I that we should just leave it out and tell that, and that it will come up in the conversation, as Jeff said, and the members of, who are appointed by the NEA will make sure that it comes up in the conversation. Well, or... Or you could ask them to consider uh, to uh, address it, how we integrate healthcare benefits into the whole pension system. I mean, how do we better do a better job of that? And because one of the challenges now is they're not integrated, right, Jeff? I mean, they're kind of separate, and and they're completely a part of it. So the question for me is, how do we better plan? Uh, how do we better integrate these two things? And I do think that's something this task force could look at without it bogging down, because it's it's uh, it's a major cost, and it need you know we need to deal with it, and it's only increasing unless we can do a better job bringing it under cost containment, unless we can figure out a better way to deliver healthcare at a reasonable and sustainable cost. So uh, I think maybe the question is, how do we integrate long term? How do we integrate healthcare benefits into the, a pension system? That is a whole study in itself. That isn't something that this group can take on and do with everything else they have to do. I, I just don't believe that they can. But they, they could say we need to do this. Right. And, and my and guess is that Jeff will make sure they do say that. OK. I, was I mean, this, was this in the house version as it came over? No, this no, this came from the NEA. Okay, I'm I'm comfortable, as I said before, as long as someone looks at it, uh, leaving it out. How do we make sure they look at it without stating it um, as as one of the goals? I mean, I just there are going to if we, there will be members of the NEA on this committee. And my guess is they will bring a recommendation back to the legislature that you need to take, you need to do more study and you need to figure out how to better integrate the healthcare into the, yeah. if they don't, then it isn't a big issue for them. Let's call the question. Okay. We can't do that in the Senate. I know. Okay. All right, but where are we? Senator Rahm told us we could do anything we wanted. So Obi, I'm just channeling Obi. I think that if it's a conversation we need to have, we should ask them at least to make a plan for how we have that conversation. That's all this section is asking. Have a plan to have that conversation on how we integrate in a sustainable fashion healthcare into a pension system. I'm sorry. You could make, it one, of the, uh, you could make it one of the duties of the oversight committee. Absolutely. Right, and that's what the treasurer suggested, I think. Yes. So we could yes. add that. So can we take it out of here? Yes. As long as it's somewhere. Okay, take it out. Gone. Jeff, we're leaning on you for that conversation. All right, let's go on to Jay. Um, just sort of a awkward uh, sentence on line 16 and 17, eco economic and economies are both in the same sentence. I think if you just said evaluating the intermediate long-term impacts to the state and local economies, or say economic yeah. impacts, it just seems like it's doesn't need to be said twice. Yeah. Uh, but I think, oh, right. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I'll, I'll delete economic in front of the impacts. I think that reads better. Yeah. Thank you. That, that reads better. Yeah. Any other issues with that one? Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah, the other, the other thing is, and at the risk of not being very popular saying this, lines 19 and 20, after spending power, if, if you're asking them to take a look at the retirees, why do you have to say retirees who identify as females or people with disabilities? I mean, I understand the emphasis there, but aren't you already saying that by saying all retirees? It just seems, I don't know, maybe I should just let it go. We're, I, I actually, um, where do you see all retirees? It says oh, their potential effect. Retiree power. spending power. Yeah. Retiree spending power. It doesn't say all. Okay. I, I, I think I think this is just, as Jeff has said, uh, we know that a, the vast majority of the NEA retirees are female and, 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 and a huge percent of retired women in the state are live at poverty level. And uh, it, I, I think they are actually a special group that, that need to be addressed in some of this. I mean, it's been called out in, in, in the, um, yeah, you know, the whatchamaduzzi for change, the, um, the, women's, the women's commission, what's it called, Keisha? Ah, I'm totally forgetting. Yeah. The commission I, I, on women? Yeah, the commission on women, but what's the, the change? What's the-, the Oh, change the story. Change the story. It's been called out and really articulated well in change the story. I, uh, I think that Brian's point is that it says including retirees, if we want to put special emphasis on them, then, then we have to say that it is it's it potential effect on retiree spending pow power, including if we want to have a special emphasis on women and people with disabilities, then we have to say that we can't just say including women and dis people with disabilities. And I'm not sure what I see what you mean. And just say, especially, yeah. Steve, did you have a comment? I see your little yellow hand up. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I apologize. I don't have a comment on this, but I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to swap out with my colleague, Tom Abdenor. I'm scheduled okay. at 3.30 to get my vaccine. Ooh, um, yay. <laughs> I just, uh, if I could just state uh, two, two important things for the record before I go, uh, not on this section, but uh, VSCA strongly believes in a 50-50 balance on the task force, and we would hope that that um, you could add another labor seat there. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to, to put on the table is in the last meeting, uh, we, we, had some, we had stated some concerns about the oversight committee. Um, we have uh, had those concerns ad addressed and we no longer have any opposition to the oversight committee. Oh, thank you, thank you. Good luck. Uh, we'll be turning it over to Tom Abdelor. And, and there's listen. Tom. On my way to the to get my is back. First or <laughs> your sleeve rolled up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, is it your first or second? Second. Oh, All right. All right. So, are we? Um, I mean, how do we want to address that? Do we? Do we really want to have this task force spend time trying to determine the? Um, I, I guess this is something else that we need to address, but is this the task force to do it? It's My feeling is you end the sentence with spending power, period. Knowing that the folks that are on the task force are gonna be well aware of some of the things we've already talked about and we leave it to them to sort of focus on folks that they really think should be focused on. It just seemed to me to be kind of a weird thing to add. I. I we could take a vote on it. We could have more discussion. Yeah, oh, 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 uh, I'd love to have Jeff weigh in because it's actually a huge percent of Jeff's uh, retirees. Right. So, and they are a vulnerable population, I think. Right. I mean, and I think I testified to this a few weeks ago now or whenever it was. Um, I remember being in Seneca Ops 15 years ago, sometimes in the early, early aughts, where we had to, as a state, elevate teachers' pensions because they were so far below the poverty line and the majority, the vast majority were 
elderly women. Uh, and so <clears throat> the, the, this was, this was a born out of that, con that history and trying to understand, okay, if you make changes and they may be appropriate now, what are the long-term effects on those people and their spending ability? So they, you know, something, the retired teacher annual, retired teachers association annually puts together a, uh, a report about the, the amount of money their members spend in the state. And I'm sure uh, the state employees associate retired association does something mm -hmm. similar. Um, so they have an economic shot in the arm, if you will, Steve just departed to um, the local economies. And if you reduce that ability to have that shot in the arm, what, what does that mean? And so it, it's sort of a way to just have this task force look at their possible decisions and the possible impact on the local economy. Can I just make a suggestion here for a, a word change? Their potential effect on retiree spending power, particularly those who identify as female and persons with disabilities. Right. right. Instead of saying including those because they're already included. Right. They are included and we'd like to have them spend more. Okay, can we, can we agree to that or not? Yeah, yep. Did you get that, Becky? I got it. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, moving on. <coughs> okay. And this is, deals with the issue of um, recruitment and retention. Right, I'm, I'm fine with this. Keisha, Senator Rahm. This is, are we, did we move on to the new, a new statement? K. K. I'm looking at it now. And we've made no changes to this since it was put in. Right. Yep. Senator Collimore. I will, however, note, Madam Chair, it's kind of interesting. Line 23 and 20, and then the first line, the next line, an evaluation of any proposed changes to current benefit structures, which could include health care. So Good point. back to it again. It, we could call it out. I'm, I'm fine with you leaving know. it in. I'm fine with leaving it in. I just wanted to point that out. Yes, I see it. Thank you. I mean, I, you know, as the one who originally had the concern about layering too much on this group, it, I have come full circle to see that it's fairly benign if it feels like it's going to keep coming up anyway for them in their consideration. So, you know. What, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, we're talking about healthcare again. I thought, so I just- Okay, no, I, I, okay. Done I didn't healthcare. know if Senator Palmer wanted to I stay there. Okay. I know, I'm gonna tell Senator okay. Palmer never to say that again. <laughs> sorry, I have Because we don't wanna go back there. We don't wanna go back there. I promise I won't today. Okay. Madam Chair, if I may, I, I think I need to correct the record. I said I didn't think it came over from the House. In fact, there was language in the House uh, going back to just the health care. So I know that the, the word that shall not be spoken, apparently. But it, it is um, it, it was included in the House version as passed differently than this, and hence the, the yellow language. I apologize. I, I said that incorrectly. I, I missed. I forgot that. Well. Right. So, so I remember this is always also all so going to a conference committee. So if it came over from the house, it'll be in the house version. Uh, yeah. well, that's true. Or we could add here on line one on page twenty two, including healthcare benefits. No. Okay. All right. I think we need to. I. The issue of healthcare benefits is unique to the teachers. And I think we need to acknowledge that that is a, a unique issue that needs to be addressed um, in a very thoughtful way. But it, it isn't, this task force is dealing with the whole, how, how we pay for this and how we get to there and, and the, and I don't think, while we need to do this, this, this is unique to the teachers. This doesn't affect the state employees. That's because they're self-insured. It's, beca 
because they're, they're well like you said it'll come up in conference committee so i don't think right. we should we need to worry too much can we move on to k yes Sorry, yes is that are we okay with that yeah. yes okay with k okay um, if I could add just a comment, it's going to be almost impossible to do. Uh, we tried to do this for the pension on the, at the request of the uh, retirement boards, the board of trustees, uh, and actuaries cannot predict future behavior. Right. Uh, right. They, so we will do what we can to do some scenarios, um, but uh, it is impossible to say how this is going to uh, until you get history. Um, and, and you see the results, but it's it's they, they can't tell you how many people are going to retire because of this, or how many people are going to stay, or how many people are going to uh, come in. It's just it's just not something that that an actuary can help us with. Uh, we could look at history of other places, perhaps, but it's it's it. I um, mean, this is not, this will. Pro I, I I needed to point that out to you. We tried to do it for the retirement boards and failed. And it and it is a question that. Um, because of the way people, there's a whole different attitude now, I think, among people about um, what they want out of a job, how long they're going to stay. Um, mm -hmm. is, is a retirement benefit, does a 20-year-old really think about their retirement benefits? Or, I mean, my, my nephew turned down a job with the state because he needed the money now. He didn't need a retirement plan. He needed a higher salary now. And so he took a job with a higher salary because, so I, I think that there's um, some differences also in the way people think about their jobs and how long they're gonna stay. And um, most people don't stay in jobs for 30 years anymore. Yeah. Anyway, we can leave this here and see what they think. Sure. Okay. Let's go to the task force. Fi uh, fiscal assistance from joint fiscal office and state treasurer. Okay with that? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what line we're on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Isn't so I would think it should say the office of the treasurer because the treasurer is on the task force. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At the moment, we haven't had that conversation. We're well, not I mean, let's say the treasurer's on the task force, then it should be, I understand wanting the office, but otherwise the treasurer can't do both. Agreed. And maybe that's- hey, Thank you for saying that, by the way. Okay. Well, whether she's on the task force or not, it probably should say office. Yes. <laughs> thank we'll you, Senator Rahm. I'll make okay. that change. Yeah, and on two, was this a question, Becky, about whether it's the Office of Legislative Council or the Joint Fiscal Office that contract? Yeah, so um, this was a question. Uh, so both uh, Joint Fiscal and Ledge Council do contracts. We typically work together. If, you know, it's, it's something we can work on together. I think okay. JFO has been working with the actuary already. So I don't know if it's more appropriate for them to sort of be named in the legislation if that's the case. I, I mean, I, I am the person that does the contract, so I will sort of state that I can happily help them if, if Ledge Council is not named on there um, to draft it. Um, it's just a matter of who who's actually issuing the contract. Um, and I, I think that they have been working with um, the, 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 act, the treasurer's actuary already um, and have I don't know if there was a contract in place, but um, with that in mind, it might be more appropriate for them to be named. Um, and I think I would also mention that some point 250,000 was mentioned for this. I think the budget has gone forward with 200. So um, I, I just don't know what the, if it's kind of too late to, to change it at this point. It's, <laughs> I, I think it's probably too late to change it at this point. We had. 200 was in here originally, and I think that's what the um, appropriations went with. And my guess is that if if it um, if there's an issue with it, it'll um, be dealt with somehow in um, budget adjustment. Or we can deal with it in conference committee. I mean, it's just on its process. So, I mean, it's just in its little progress over to the house right now. So, I mean, or about to be, because we haven't voted on third reading. So. I, I don't think the appropriate the house appropriations had anything in there. Right, but 
we can, it, it, could, it anyway, we could change it, try and change it if we needed to. Okay, I, I think, but so Chris, is JFO the appropriate? Uh, Ma Madam Chair, I, I would make this suggestion if, if this doesn't violate too many drafting conventions to say Office of Legislative Council like and Joint Fiscal Office or Joint Fiscal Office because oh, but between the two of us, we can figure this out. And, and both offices are funded from the, from the General Assembly. Right. So Becky, however you word that, um, we'll be okay. Typ typically we just name one of one. them, but I can, I will, I will run it by uh, Steve or, or Catherine at JFO to, to see how they want to word it. Okay. Okay. So you'll take care of that, but we are in agreement that that's the way we should be doing it. Committee? Yes. Yes. And would you okay. like me to change it back to 200,000 for now? No, we're taking that line out completely. Oh, so no appropriation? No, it's in the appropriations it, bill. It's already oh, gone. Oh, I see. Oh. I see. I see. They'll pull it out anyway. I but, no, let's let's finish with this okay. first. Okay. Okay. Which one? The legislative council thing? Yeah. And okay. Becky will come up with the right language on that. Anthony, you keep popping around on my screen. I can't keep track of you. <laughs> I haven't moved an inch. I don't understand it. <laughs> There's many things about this technology we don't understand. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, anytime anyone else comes in or out of the meeting, it shifts. Oh, okay. So uh, we need to take out the line, the whole appropriations line because it okay. is in the appropriations bill. Okay. Um, yes. Can I say something about that? Now, so we're talking about the appropriation, right? Yeah. I would, I appreciate what Senator Clarkson said in that I know it's live in the appropriations bill that we passed out of the Senate. And if somebody who feels qualified to could start to talk to us about like a more itemized budget or say, I, I know it's one thing to kind of live within what it exists at 200,000, but we've, we've added a lot of different pieces to what they're charged with. And I just feel like it's worth knowing if we, if 200,000 feels adequate or not. Well, I, I would say that I, I don't think there's much chance of changing it now. It is in the budget and we would be asking them to change their budget. And so right. I, I think that we have to stick with the 200,000 that's in the budget. And if it looks like it has to go over that, then we will try to make um, uh, some changes in either other money that's in the legislative budget or in budget adjustment. I don't know how we can do that now. I, I just think we have two options. We have one option is to go to our house counterparts after the budget actually gets, has third reading and, um, and, and, and suggest that th this increase would be appropriate. And if they argued for it on their side, that might be great in the conference committee of the budget. And the second option, if that fails, is there's always uh, money that can be played with if things go over in, in, right. in, in legislative budgeting. So uh, because of all these study committees, there is there is flexible money for study committees and support for that kind of thing because you never fully know. And right. so there, it, within our legislative budget, this, is, uh, this isn't... A, a, so expensive that it would throw anything. Right. I, I think that that is the the, be the better way to do it. Um, I don't remember that in the house, in the original house budget, if there was, I mean, Bill, that there was an appropriation. I don't think there was. So I, if there was not an appropriation, it's going to be hard for them to argue for a higher appropriation than the Senate. It's never... I, I, it's, it's maybe I think that we should, I think we should just leave it at $200,000 and we should trust that if it goes over that there will be money somehow in the legislative budget. 
Right. I think I just want to name there the... was just to be clear, there was 200,000 in, in the house version. Oh, there was. Okay. And now we in the house the... version of H449, not the house. Oh, not the house budget, budget but in the okay. house version of H449, which came to us. Okay, I would I would recommend that we end this conversation. We have two hundred thousand dollars in there, in the in both budgets, and if it goes over, there will be ways of dealing with it because it isn't as if it's a million dollars. It's there will be ways of dealing with it, and I don't think we should be any more prescriptive on how they spend the money. That's going to be up to the task force to to work with uh, JFO and Ledge Council to. Um, say what it is that they need. Yes, Senator Rahm. As we put this issue to rest, I just want to say for the record, my intent in raising this is that I wouldn't want any of the stakeholders here or who are watching to have the argument made to them, oh, you know, we just don't have enough money for a second opinion on this piece or a sort of yeah. second study. And so I'm just raising it now so that everyone's clear there might be the ability to appropriate more and nobody should be shutting down debate around expert testimony um, because of cost. No, no, I think, I mean, if it gets to 500,000, I think we probably right. need to shut it down. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay, so we're okay with taking that out. And the uh, let's go to the... Uh, Legislative Oversight Committee, and we heard from VSEA that they're okay with that. Um, committee members, where are we? No, we're at the top of page 23. No, I didn't mean where are we in the bill. I meant where are we with the Joint Fiscal, with the Joint Oversight Committee. I When I say where are we, I, I don't mean where physically in the bill. I mean, where are we in terms of our agreement or disagreement with the issue? I, I, you just skipped the date. So I assume that you're assuming we're all okay with the dates. So I just, you, so are we going to check that off? Oh, well, we hadn't changed them since we originally I talked we about them. So some of the things too that we visited. So are, I, I assume we're all okay with the dates. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oversight committee. I appreciated Steve Howard's comment. Can you remind us? Of he said he was okay with it. Oh, okay. 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 I thought there was something. I'm okay right. with it. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm okay with it too. And I think we've kind of agreed that on page 25 under powers and duties, we make some reference to the uh, provision about them looking into uh, the healthcare stuff. Yep. <laughs> how to integrate how to integrate the health care benefits yeah. into the retirement system into the pension system so, sorry can you can you restate that change I, I didn't quite understand where you were putting that in which one Becky it wasn't a change it was an addition it was right an and I thought charging the pension charging the oversight committee with reviewing or looking at the alternative health care issues. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that very well, but that's what it meant. It's really the question of how do they integrate the health care benefits in with the pension system. So the pension oversight committee is in statute and so if you want them to have a uh, separate like a specific requirement reporting requirement, I would then make a, a different section to say that they would look at this issue and report back, you know, by a certain time on that. So do you have a, a timeline for when they would um, come back to the legislature with that? Well, I thought we were just putting it on their to-do list. Like an ongoing. Yeah. yeah. So they stay current with healthcare innovation, healthcare changes in healthcare nationally, statewide it, i don't know jeff you've got ideas i'm sure I, yeah so I, I was wondering if it so it's already there becky you know they've, they've got a charge so i assume this is adding to it and i think the the, the assumption i was working under is if it's not going to be in the task force's charge you'd pick it up and lift up what's what's currently there and put it into the uh, the oversight charge the charge of the oversight committee. 
because you know what we're coming at is, is teachers are different than the state employees and, and should the oversight committee look at that exclusively not maybe that's the way we say it is that the oversight committee needs to look at the difference between the teachers opebs and the i mean and how to integrate them into i don't know the, the I thought you were going into place. That's why I was shaking my head, Madam Chair. I, I think that's right. If you're just looking at the teachers and retired teachers, because they operate differently. And, and right. the question is, should they, is that good or bad? I don't know. Right. right. So they, they're going to review the, um, how the health benefits relate to pensions for the teachers and how they might, um, and in, in terms of, um, Innovations that are helping happening around the in, in healthcare. So, would you make that charge number four? Yeah. Okay. So, I have a thought. Yeah. So, I actually don't know what, besides, it says, you know, the committee shall convene during session at the call of the chair. Are there other ad hoc or the kind of um, non-standing committees that um, have, are, it's worded differently. So they do meet more often during the session. No. Okay, because legislative, when I was on legislative IT, we met during session. Right, but that's a different, there's. Right, but, I just the, think it's valuable if this committee meets during session. You know, should be able to meet whenever it needs to meet. But I think that I, I yeah. think that oversight committees don't because during the session we're in session and we're the the group that addresses this it, just like judiciary addresses judicial issues during the session. But during the off session, you need a group that keeps track of and has oversight over those issues. If we start, I, I think it's very, except for things that specifically dealt with like. Um, legislative IT and um, legislative management, whatever that was when we had, when we were dealing with hiring an HR person and that kind of stuff, that does meet during the session. But oversight committees and um, other committees just, you, you would, first of all, it would be impossible to have Senate members sitting on other committees that meet during the session. It just is impossible. And well, I mean, I can, and, I can see they're having unfinished business that they wanted to make, take action on or something or make a recommendation on and meet it in the beginning of January still to finish that up. I mean, I well, can- Well, that says that they, it, at the call of the chair, they can meet. Oh, great, then that's fine. If, but, but I don't think that they should be a regularly meeting um, committee during session because we it is uh, we are I, I don't know I I just I have it's an oversight really committee. strong feelings about setting up other committees that meet during the session that take time away from standing committees and there just isn't time for them to meet otherwise well or we're just all tired getting up early so we did move it to the following year right yeah, I would I would say that it shouldn't even start until January 2022. Right, right. That's what we agreed on. I think. yeah, yeah. I mean, I still find it to be then kind of like an, a confusing and extra layer, but it's not the hill that I will die on. I just for the record, I still don't get it. But if it adds value, great. Well, it's it. There are many. There's the Boards and Commissions Sunset Committee. There's the Government Accountability Committee. There's Judicial Oversight. There's uh, child welfare oversight committees. Those committees meet during the off session to make sure that things are- I've heard that they meet. I haven't heard that they've like changed any conversations <laughs> materially. Uh, I yes, think they have yes. uh, hugely. I mean, justice oversight saw our whole mental competency. They're all very active in the off session. So they all yeah. make a lot of, I mean, that. Wait till you serve on one. I mean, they, I, Sandy, I, I've only heard that the ones that are left are pretty active and pretty and thoughtful. Brian um, chairs the Government Accountability Committee, and we meet at least 
five or six times during the summer and we have done many things. Um, he is also on the uh, boards and commissions Sunside Committee with me and we have eliminated something like, I don't know, 80 or 90 boards and commissions. That's what H122 is, it comes from that committee. Yeah, there. you should get the list and ask, ask people who serve on them. Cause I think everyone who serves on those, those oversight committees feels they're pretty. I'm, uh, I'm sure and, and we'll serve on them too. Senator Rahm, I know that you feel, but you were appointed to the, um, to GAC and there ha was, has only been one meeting since you were appointed. So that's why it only, why you've only been to one meeting because it only met once since you were appointed and it doesn't meet during the, the session. And it will meet five or six times over the summer fall. I, okay. I worry that I, I don't know who, who's coming in to speak to that group. I don't know if it feels like people whose pensions are in question should be watching it all the time. You know, it just feels like a, a more of something that would produce anxiety for people than make them feel like, wow, the legislature is really watching this because I mean, I just don't know what what their authority will be at the end of the day. So that's still my concern, but I'm still voting for the bill and I'm not advocating that you take it out at this point. I would hope this would give people more confidence that actually the legislature is going to be more thoughtful and stay on top of these issues more consistently. That's how I view this. Yeah, me too. I, I think that's what oversight committees do. And I, I the oversight and the oversight committees have no authority to make any changes. They just they're not going to they're not going to say, OK, now we're going to we're going to decide that um, we're not going to pay for uh, we're going to increase the um, the the copays on primary care. I mean, they can't do that, even if they wanted to. They can't do that. They have no, they just make recommendations. They just keep, and I can tell you the mental health oversight committee was really valuable when we were going through um, the, the mental health um, plan over the, for the state. They, it made sure that the retreat was part of the plan. It made sure that there were step down beds that were part of the plan. I mean, it, it made a huge difference. So anyway, Chris. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just I wanted to raise one point to maybe help clarify this conversation a little bit. Um, the the treasurer uh, has noted in, in, in prior hearings that um, she provides a lot of her office provides a lot of reports to the General Assembly about the pension systems. Some of those reports are timed to land when the General Assembly is not in session. So the annual valuation reports, which are, are probably the best uh, mm -hmm. opportunity to sort of take the take a read on what's going on with the pension fund, those land in the fall prior to the um, legislature coming into session. So I would imagine that those are the types of things that this oversight group would focus some of their attention on uh, whenever the legislature is not in session. Thank you. That was very helpful. Madam Chair, I don't have yeah. a raise hand thing, but if I could talk to two issues. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna limit this conversation because we have got to get back to the um, unless okay. there's something else that needs to be done about the oversight committee. Well, there are two issues. One is, um, um, and I have no trouble with the title oversight, but when you talk about exercising oversight over the Vermont State employees, the word oversight means control, manage, supervision, uh, and I know that's not what you're trying to do. Um, uh, that's what the word means, okay? And if you take a look at what a board of trustees do, uh, they have, as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, uh, um, uh, two areas of fiduciary responsibility set up by the IRS. I like the word oversight committee in the title. What I'm suggesting here is for the purpose of receiving reports and, and, and uh, receiving in, uh and act, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, the act, uh, oh. receiving reports on the activities and the status of the fund or something. I think that if you say oversight there, you run into an issue of you're running afoul of the definition of a board's fiduciary responsibility under the IRS. Mm -hmm. This is a different board than some of the others that you have. We can change the wording here, leave the oversight there, 
but change the wording here so that it doesn't suggest that the legislature could intervene in the board's decision-making process. I mean, you you definitely have decision-making around benefits, you know, and all that, but getting into the, the issue of the, the, the sole fiduciary responsibility, the, um, the uh, exclusive benefit rule that the IRS has. So I'm thinking just a wording change there would help. And then what, what, what word would be changed? Uh, for the purpose of, instead of saying exercise oversight, for the purpose of receiving um, uh, reports, uh, at, uh, receiving a report on the activities and status, uh, activities of the retirement boards and, um, um, uh, and, the, and the status of the funds or something along that line. Um, and I would also recommend including that every year that the board chairs and the, and the treasurer um, do an annual report to you folks. Well, okay. I guess I will ask um, Becky if that um, makes sense, because, but I think if we limit it to them just receiving reports. No, nope. you review, make recommendations. And, I, but and, I and providing and working with and providing assistance to other legislative committees. Yeah, that's fine. I, I mean, I, Becky, I can we change just, that? I would just suggest just saying there's created a joint legislative pension oversight committee for the purpose of working with and providing assistance to other legislative committees on matters okay. related yes. so okay. that you're just avoiding because I think it's it's saying the same thing in the Good. second part of the sentence yeah. without trying to okay. um, yeah. you know go yeah. into too much detail okay. on that. Yeah, I didn't want to run a follow of the IRS. I try to avoid that in all things. Um, but um, <laughs> good um, idea. All right. Okay. So we'll take you, out we'll take yeah. out that section. Yeah. Am I so, adding in other post-employment benefits here too? Sure. Uh, on three. I yeah. mean, on four, yeah. Yeah. And the last thing I would suggest is that you require us to, to report to you annually, the three board of trustee chairs and as well as the, um, 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 uh, maybe I'll let Tom dis discuss that, whether it should include the, the VPIC commission or whatever we call it, but the treasurer and the retirement boards to give you an update. And I think that that's important to have that hearing. And I would agree with um, uh, Chris that a lot of our stuff gets done in November and December when you're not in session. Um, so uh, I think it would be a good idea to have us do an annual report to you as you're getting ready for the next session. We could put that in there. Yep. And I don't know how Tom feels about that uh, for, for VPIC, but I think it would be a good idea. VPIC, the treasurer and the retirement boards. One last suggestion, Madam Chair. I talked about this last time, I think on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, I, and I don't see it in here, Becky, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought we talked about having this uh, oversight committee start after the task force. Yes, and July 2022. It's that, July that, should be in the, that should be in the effective date. I have a note. See, I don't see that either. I don't think it's in there. No, right it now. isn't it's here. It's not. It's okay. not in the effective date. That's what I was looking for. So right. I think section 11 needs to be effective. Yes, 22. I can make it July 2022. 2022. Yes. Yes, I have a note that we needed now to change that in I the effective date. I what we agreed date. to. Yeah. But, um, and Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it, I would take out the number of times it meets. Uh, line 17 on page 25. I know that too. I, I would get rid of it, it'll just meet. Uh, it, it will meet during adjournment and may meet. I mean, it just. The, I, I think. I don't think we have any idea how often it will meet uh, at this point. I think that oversight committees generally have a limit on the number of times they can meet and, and then they have to get permission to meet more than that. I think all, all summer, uh, all non-session committees have a number of times that they are authorized to meet. They can meet up to, they can meet, um, and then if they wanna meet more, they have to get permission. Uh, isn't that pretty standard, Becky? Yeah, that's typical language. And I think it's also yeah. a budget issue because if you're providing um, compensation well, and reimbursement, yeah. well, it's, typic it's typically tied to an amount of money per meeting. Um, and I can, I mean, I this is a, like, for example, I'm, I'll bring it up, but I think the legislative 
the Justice Oversight Committee had, I think most of them have like a, an, an amount of times mm -hmm. that they meet. So what, what, what does Justice Oversight do? And let's just do what they do. I mean, I, I hadn't um, realized it was so prescriptive all the time. So yes. Justice Oversight meets six times during adjournment. They may meet six times. They don't have to meet six times, but they may meet six times. Well, why don't we just add that and just right. make it? Right, that's, yes, I don't think we want to say, take that out. But it says X at the moment. I know, that was a question that I was going to ask of how many we put in there. But then it was suggested that we take it out. Yes, that's true. Well, I thought, well, I have a limit. But because we don't want them meeting like yeah, I, every I, day, I, like a com regular committee. I, I mean, I think that's great. Yeah. Okay. So, are we all okay on the oversight mm -hmm. committee? And then yeah, the effective yeah. date will be Ju July 2022. And yeah. then that also means it doesn't have to go to the appropriations committee because there's no appropriation in it for this year. It'll be in next year's budget for the per diems. So I, I was going to add in a subsection um, H for reports to say that the boards and VPIC would submit a report by um, uh, an annual report to them. But I think you want to pick a date that's between when session starts, like before session starts. So are you thinking something like November 1st or, or something like that? When are those reports usually issued, Beth? You're mute. So the um, the actuary reports are done at the last week of October. Uh, we finalize everything, get them out the first week of November. By November 1st, we're required to send to the, you and the governor uh, what the ADEC recommendation is. Uh, the, the OPEB usually gets done in November. It's a little bit behind um, the, the pension. Uh, so the, the reports on the, and the valuation of the OPEB funds are probably in in, in mid-November, uh, if that's helpful. So if we put December 1st, by December 1st? Absolutely. So annually, on or before December 1, yeah. each year, those entities would send an annual report to the, to the Oversight Committee? Or would report to. Okay. 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 Um, and can I read just so I understand, I make sure I got this right for the powers and duties. Um, so I added in um, a new, a new number three, um, that was the same language that was in the task force. Um, so I, I said the committee shall evaluate and make recommendations on issues of public policy relating to health benefit design innovation state regulatory measures and alternative methods of providing pooled healthcare benefits to both active and retired school employees to lower healthcare costs for employees, retirees, school boards, and the state. Was that the in intent of the of the committee? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Works for me. Yeah, I, th I think so. Thank you. That was. So. All right. I think we have. Um, uh, land. We have agreed on everything with the exception of two issues. And one is the makeup of the VPIC board and the other is the makeup of the um, task force. So which would you prefer to go to first committee? I, may we stand for a moment and take- We can, in 20 minutes, we're back on the floor. So I don't wanna take too oh, you're much right. of a break here because we're gonna to have to come back after the floor. I have heard from the pro tem that it's going to be very brief. Can I okay. ask also a, a, a maybe less controversial uh, question to at the beginning of the bill that I just wanna make sure that I got the right information on. Okay. Um, so under the um, definitions for the new VPIC for independent, uh, I think I missed whether you accepted that change for independent, which was taking out the disclosures. Yes. Um, so there was an amendment on the House floor, which wasn't reflected in the version I think that you all saw that made clear that um, 
Oh, Heidi's. Heidi's amendment. Yes. Right? So Let's... that the individual, so right now it says an individual has a direct or indirect material interest in the plan. If an, if the individual is a beneficiary of any of the plans in the version on the house floor, it also added to that line, um, the individual or the individual's um, and, and the spouse, parent, child, or sibling, I believe. Um, I just have to double check that. So do you want to follow that or just keep as is? I think the idea was that when you took out the disclosure, um, sorry, they, they added, or the individual spouse, parent, or child is a beneficiary of the plan. So when you took out that disclosure, there was nothing in there that um, addressed whether somebody was a beneficiary of the plan, like through their spouse, for example, or their child or parent. I thought we got rid of that. Of, of it. Um, I, this only refers to the uh, governor's appointment, right? That's correct, yeah. So the governor could not appoint somebody who has any relationship to one of the plans. If it, the relationships that were, if it's their self, their parent, child, or sibling. Where are we committed? Uh, sorry, that? parent, their, their spouse, parent, or child. Those are the only relationships. So for example, okay. if your spouse is a beneficiary of the plan, then you would be considered a, a, a having a sort of indirect interest in the plan because of that relationship. Right. Okay, so Tom? It would affect shit that me too. The one concern I have with this that I, I'll bring up is that, say for example, one of my kids comes home and gets a teacher's job, would that automatically exclude me from potentially serving as chair? I think you open up a can of worms in that situation. I can see the benefit of not you know, particularly if, say, they work for a school district in Burlington or whatever, would that would that automatically exclude a board member because one of their? I, I think it. I can understand the spouse situation potentially, but I think if your mother is a teacher, I, don't know, I, I think it's overly broad. And with fifty thousand beneficiaries, there's a lot of unintended consequences that may prevent good people from serving. You know, my kids are all getting out of college. One of them come come home this and decide to take a job would that automatically exclude me? So I throw yes. that out there. <clears throat> I I don't I actually don't agree with that. I think that um, the um, when in, even in Masons when we talk about conflict of interest, it's if 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 you you have more of an interest than the general population, and and I if so. You, if you, if your child is a beneficiary or your parent is a beneficiary, it, that is ridiculous, I think, because you voting on this would have no more to gain than anybody else in the broad population of beneficiaries. And that's the, that's the way Mason's addresses conflict of interest. So um, I, I think that we, we could put spouse in here, but I don't want to put child or parent. I don't know where it is child. Does it say parent? Go yeah. back. No, the, the, maybe we should leave this as it is. Okay. Um, so, uh, because the house now has child, parent, spouse, or self, and we can argue for taking out parent and child. I find that compelling. I mean, a lot of people are related to teachers. So, yeah. you know, spouse says something, but, you know, and, and I, I mean, it will still maybe impact your thinking to know how your parent is doing in the system, but I don't think that's too um, close a, a conflict. I think you're thinking about them as a, as a human being who you care about, which you could do with people you're not related to, but a spouse is right there with yeah. you all the time. I, I, I don't know, I, I really have, if you're independent, 
if your child, if you know your child is going to be harmed by something, are you going to actively support it? If you know your parent is going to be affected, I, I think independent is independent. I, I, I really have a hard time. Um, I, I think, but I mean, Tom's right. Like, what if your kid becomes a teacher and you're like a really valuable <laughs> member of the committee? You know, it's it's really limiting because we a lot of I, I have three teachers in my immediate family. You know, I don't think it biases me that much. You know, I, I think bias, as you and I, as we all know, is is uh, uh, often not necessarily something we all acknowledge. And I think that when you know somebody you care about and love or, and know is going to be affected, you may choose differently. I mean, you know, I, I think- I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand the, the decisions VPIC would make that would trigger this because we're really yeah. making investment decisions that would be yeah. more involved with best practice or, you know, fiduciary standards. And we wouldn't be affecting beneficiary changes right. yeah. um, to, to my knowledge. So well, I, I imagine recusal would be important if we do. Yeah. I, I just don't mm -hmm. think it. Disclosure and recusal, but not. Yeah. child and parent as yeah. a, I, I mean if we think about the number of retirees from the state and the teachers that live in the state of vermont or the number of current employees because it's both current and retired right and then we think that the chair the vice chair and the governor's appointee could not be related to any of those and Tom is right. If his kid comes back to Vermont and gets a job with the state or with the in the in a, as a teacher, he's out. Or as a firefighter, or as a, any of the Veemers members. There's so right. many different entities this could be triggered by. I I think it's overly broad. I I I think it is. Well, I I I suggest we leave it just as we have it here. And the conference committee will work it out with the house because it's their amendment. We don't we don't have to agree with their amendment. But it's part. It's been incorporated into the bill. I mean, what? what but we're making. We, we are doing our own version of the bill. We are not looking at the house right. bill. Uh, right. I mean, we're doing a strike all version of the right. bill, and there are many things in the house bill that we don't have in here. I don't know why we would put this in just because it's in the House bill. Becky was just simply saying we had not looked at the House right. bill fully as we might because we had it had not been incorporated into our version. That's all. That right, said. right. But I'm I'm saying that I don't think we should change ours because of their amendment. <laughs> I don't know where our Senator Collimore. I say remain silent on it and battle it out in conference. Senator Polina. I agree with what Tom was saying about if you're only talking about making investment decisions in this particular group, you're not talking about benefits. If your son or your daughter becomes a part of these pension plans, you're just gonna to try to make the best possible investments. <laughs> you, don't get, you don't get to say what the benefits are gonna be. So I, I, I look at it that way. Maybe you should be required to be related to somebody so you're right. making the best. Right. You should have at least investment. one teacher in your family. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to suggest that um, we now have two issues, the two, the makeup of the two, um, the task force and the VPIC board that are the only outstanding issues that we have. Am I right about that? I thought, what did we do about the the, um, the term limit thing? What did we, I forget what we decided to do about that. We I think we took it out. We we decided to leave it out until the VPIC consultant makes a recommendation. Oh, right, right, okay, I, I remember now, yep. Okay. I remember. Okay. And so what I'm going to suggest is that we, um, come back as soon as the floor is over. I, we have um, 10 minutes until we're on the floor. It might be wise if we took a 10 minute break and um, 
did whatever it is that we have to do during our 10 minute breaks. Um, I, for one, am going to go pick a daffodil um, and come back as soon as we're done on the floor and hash out these last two issues. And then I am not exactly sure how we're going to do this in terms of Becky, what is your timing here in terms of making the changes? We've agreed to all the changes now, except for those two, right? Um, I yeah. have been, I have um, an amendment prepared that is edited as of before this meeting started. So I can send them the changes that you just made um, with the goal of having it edited after the floor, if that works. Oh, you mean like a strike all you had? You had uh, not a strike all, just, a, uh, I struck out, I mean, I did a strike all of sections, just section one where the, uh, the commission section and the task force commission, just because you made a bunch of changes in those sections. And then I added in the uh, oversight committee. Um, but there are a few sections you are not touching. So I didn't do a strike yeah. all of the whole bill. Um, so I have that uh, in the works, um, I guess, and just in terms of timing, um, our editing staff is would need to know. So I can send them the new changes right now that you just did. Um, well, the question I have is if, 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 if it's done as it, wouldn't it be easier to do this whole thing as a strike all? Well, there, are, I yeah. mean, you're not touching at all sections. I mean, I can do it that way, whatever you prefer. It's just, you're not touching sections two, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you're making a very small change in section four. So essentially oh, I sections, see. Uh, sorry, in section three. So essentially sections two through nine, you're not really making oh. any changes to. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I struck okay. out, I just did a strike all of the, of the two main sections that you're changing. Got it. Um, because there are a bunch of instances in, yeah. in, in those sections. So it would have been confusing, but the yeah. other sections of the bill, I, I, it, de it depends on what you, how you'd like to present it. If you want it presented as the whole bill. Um, but if you're not touching those sections, I wouldn't normally include it in an amendment. Right. I, I, I get that. I, I, I kind of misunderstood there. Yeah, that makes sense. And then when we come back, we can um, look at that and then make the decisions about the um, the two boards. And then if it's at all possible, it would be great to get this voted out today so we can have it on, the, on Tuesday so we can deal with it. Oh. Uh it because we've got to get this, notice. we've got to get this to a conference committee. Yeah, it would just be on notice Tuesday, but yeah. Well, I'm going to ask, whenever it gets there, I'm going to ask us to um, advance it into all stages. So um, just so I know, if you are voting it out, um, the two changes you have left to make are just, I'm guessing they're not things that have to go through editing again, right? They're just... The, the composition of the board, like the number of people on the board. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense, committee? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay. And other people that are with us? And I appreciate, um, and my, when I go downstairs for my break here, my husband's going to tell me I again sound like a tyrant. So, mm -hmm. Forgive me for sounding like a tyrant. <laughs> you sounded just fine. And I think we're making progress. No, I think is we there, are. Is there a sense of how long the floor will be just so I can short. tell editing? It, it, it's going to be short. Like 15 or 20 minutes? Mm. My guess is we can't do anything in less than that. Okay. All right. Great. I will. I'm on it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. All right, thanks. So just a question here, Gail, are we going to use the same um, link or will you send us a new one? I think we can use the same link. If okay. not, I will send you one and uh, yeah, just be watching your email. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. Thank uh, you.